I'm going to have a hooker today. <laughs> this is Multi Playing, episode 27, recorded on Friday, March 12th, 2010. Everybody online looking good. A companion podcast to the collaborative blog and gaming community that's playing as life allows. This is multiplaying. Well, let's start the insanity. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Hello? Uh, Great heavens! What kind of radio show is this? This is multiplaying, the companion podcast to multiplaying.net. Tonight we have Jason, what's your beverage? I'm drinking a martini, bitches. Oh, Wait, what is it? It's got a lemon in it. <laughs> not a whole lemon. We didn't just plop a lemon in there. It's just Whoa, vodka yeah. and a lemon. It's, it's not it's, like Girls Gone Wild up in here. It's just like black. <laughs> it's a vodka martini up with a twist. Yeah, bitches. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, Straight you won't. Though. Even if you know I'm wrong, you won't email. I dare you. Multi playing at gmail.com. Go ahead and email us. I dare you. You're not going to, are you? I would do right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that, it right now. That's John. John, what's your beverage? <laughs> it's I, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's ginger ale and Captain Morgan. Oh, that's called Captain's Cove. Captain's Cove. Tastes like fucking cream soda. It's awesome. Yeah, those Ooh. are awesome. Man, I like cream yeah. soda. Those yeah, dude. Tasty. Okay, here's the thing. Like the, you know I what? You, bar, oh, go ahead. And uh, the dude was like, oh, you know, like, what kind of soda do you normally drink? I was like, well, when I do, I just drink something simple like cream soda. He's like, I got the drink for you. And he was like, he was like, check this out. And I'm like, well, what the hell is it? He's like, try it first. It's like, okay. I was like, shit, is this cream soda? He's like, nope, it's ginger ale and Captain. And I'm like, what? Oh, <laughs> yeah. man. I like Diet Verner's and Captain Morgan's. Oh, it's like no calories and good. God, I'm going to the liquor store tomorrow. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, so, but seriously. these Indiana laws can't buy from oh, oh, wait, tomorrow is wait, Saturday. Tomorrow's Saturday. Oh, what, right. What's going on in Canada there? Or, I'm sorry, Indiana. Canada. In Canada. Indiana, you can't sell Indiana, Canada, it's kind of the same. <laughs> they both end in A. Yeah, that's where I'm going with that. They have, <laughs> Just, they're, you know, know multi-syllabolic. <laughs> yeah, they, they both end with, they both end with, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's the same shit. So, Steve, what are you working mm. on? I have got a woodchuck draft cider. I totally thought you were going to say something else right there. <laughs> what did you? Huh? I got a wood. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> whoa. <laughs> TMI. Uh, you put your mouth on. Stick she to said, don't call me Chuck. <laughs> And I'm Shannon, and I have the same as Jason. Vodka Martini, up with a twist. Um, well, what you been playing, Jay? I've been playing... What have I been playing? i got to stop and think. Oh, you, I've not been keeping tabs on you. It's, you gotta... I know. I, I haven't had a babysitter this week, so God knows. I mean, <laughs> I've been playing some... Uh, I've still been playing some Warhammer, so I've been in T2. And I've been it's pretty much the same as last week. I haven't done any PvE. All I've been doing is getting in and um, doing PvP. And there's been stuff going on pretty much every time I've logged in. As soon as I logged in, there's a, they give you the nice little battle report, which is cool since I was in war last. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it. When you log in, it gives you a war report, and it breaks it up into tiers. And it says, here's what's going on in... Here's the, here's the zone that has the highest population. Here's the zone that has a keep thing going on. Here's where there's the most RVR activity, and you can hit go, and it's like on an eight-hour awesome. timer, yeah. and it'll take you to the war camp in that oh, area. So once every eight hours, you can use it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it, but you but you can look at that report at all at any time. So if you're in the war camp and you want to fly somewhere, you can pull it up and look at it. You just can't port. Oh, there. okay. Gotcha. But that's yeah. actually pretty cool. Yeah. And the auto level bump that we talked about last week continues to rock. So I like I leveled my engineer from I don't know what I was last week. If I was twelve, thirteen, or fourteen, and now I'm eighteen. And I've only been playing a little bit here and there, and I haven't done any PvP. Just I mean PVE. I'm sorry. So I've been just doing it, go, opening up the war report, going there, and uh, doing keep stuff or joining a war band when I find one there. 
It's also pretty fun. I have no idea what the upper tiers are like, so right. we'll see. I played my Archmage when he was 21, and I was kind of nervous about getting him to 22, because it sounds like there's stuff going on, because I can see they have a new uh, chat system in place, too, where it's you automatically join it, and it's Realm 1, Realm 2, Realm 3, I mean, uh, Tier 1, Tier 2, two 3, 4. And it's kind of like a warband chat that people just give defenses updates in. It reminds me of DAOC more, how they added those chat systems in place for uh, like the battle group and stuff that you joined. Um, right. Other than that, I'm playing a little bit of Final Fantasy 13. I've only in about probably about an hour and a half, so I don't know. I can't really, I haven't really gotten a vibe on that too much. The combat seems cool, but I'm really in the beginning, and I've it, heard it's pretty slow at the beginning and I have to agree with that. But yeah, graphics are great. Looks quite yeah, are you playing that John? Yeah, I'm I'm even earlier than you are, actually. But uh one of my friends is uh she's like three, four hours in and she's like, It's still slow, but you know, whatever, it's Final Fantasy. So it, it, it yeah, it's Final Fantasy and it's fun, so I'm not really complaining. Um I heard I mean, it picks you know, up, but I'm enjoying yeah. it. Yeah, she said that it's starting to starting to come around i don't know i'm not that yeah. far myself so i have no idea plus yeah. she plays slower than most other people like you know takes her sweet ass time doing stuff that's pretty much i think that's pretty much what i'm playing somewhere battlefield just multiplayer which is still fun but that's about it have you played any of the single player on that yeah i do have yeah some comments. wait battlefield bad company yeah two yeah nice um, okay the campaign I don't know. I'm not. It's not clicking me with like the first campaign did. I love the characters. They're, I mean, they're stupid but goofy fun. And in the first one, it was all about them trying to get some gold. And you know, while they were in the in the army or whatever division they were in, and it had a Three Kings kind of vibe to it that was a lot of fun. And this one, it's more serious. They still joke around, but it's 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 they don't really get goofy like they do with the mission type structure. It's very linear and not very open like it was before which it gives it more focus and you kind of know exactly what to do but i don't know i kind of miss that part of it but it's definitely there's some cool set pieces and it's definitely fun but i would you, would you say that's like it's losing what made it more unique versus all the other yeah shooters? a little bit single player yeah i mean that was the first battlefield single player campaign and i i really liked it it wasn't i mean it the story was whatever the characters were what made it and you still get that they still go off on just weird rants and and conversations but it's it's not really the fact that it's more serious in tone that you're looking for this missing weapon the uh, mass destruction type thing i don't know it takes some of the fun out of it but hmm. yeah but the Multiplayer is better than the last one, so it kind of makes up for it. I really can't complain, but that's what I've been playing. All right. John, what you got going on besides um, the Final Fantasy? Yeah, Final Fantasy a little. Uh, actually, I've been replaying through Warhammer Dawn of War 2 because uh, Chaos Rising expansion came out today, and I did not realize that the campaign can import sort of like Mass Effect 2 did. Oh, shit. Yeah, that is cool. I got that. So I'm replaying through the first one first before I even touch it. Because, like, I, I went to start, I was like, okay, start a new campaign. Because in all the previous, like, Dawn of War 1, the campaigns were all separate stories, completely separate stories. And so I was like, okay, whatever, start a new campaign. And it was like, import. And I was like, import? Back, <laughs> back, start a new campaign in Dawn of War 1. <laughs> I was like, or Dawn of War, you know. The but that's cool that you can launch it from the expansion. Yeah, it, it's the original uh, campaign. Right. That's that's one thing that I do and like to. Um, what, it's fun. When do you it's, get imported like, over though? I don't know yet. Oh. Yeah. hasn't hasn't done it yet. You went back to. Yeah, I don't know. I I will find out and I will report next week. But uh, <laughs> doing that. I, I want a uh, notepad by the computer as you take notes with glasses on. About <laughs> all the I, uh, other stuff that's like old news by now for you guys was I played Infamous on the PS3. I played Killzone 2. Yeah. 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 All that stuff, but Infamous that's... is awesome. What do you think of Infamous? <laughs> Infamous was fun. I liked the uh, the two different endings. How you could you know be the good or bad guy, of course. And Killzone Two, I got my ass whipped like a little redheaded stepchild because yeah, that game I... is serious business. I was playing, but I was playing on the easiest setting, like recruit. Like I was like, and I wasn't even drunk. <laughs> <laughs> like, Shut up. Yeah. Well, that game, that game is hardcore. In the, in the campaign. It's, it's not even that. It's like, it's like, okay, so I'm a PC gamer, right? So let me, 
<laughs> you know, you guys know that, but whatever. So I'm like sitting there with the controller. I've tried adjusting the sensitivity. I tried everything. The dual stick thing does not click for me on shooters. It nah, just, I'm, but I'm you, with you on that. You have to take that game. That game is very weird in its controls. It really feels like you're in mud at times. Most uh, shooters on the PS3 or, or 360 don't don't control like that game does. That game no. really kind of feels like a more of an older. That has con- nothing to do with it for me because even in Call of Duty or Halo, even or I mean even any game you name it, it doesn't matter. Two sticks doesn't fucking work. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. It's not as good as as PC, but yeah, that that game in particular is really bad compared it's to worse the other than one. others. Okay. Well, regardless, I, I tried. I really did. I could not get past, like, the second mission. Um, and I just had to return it. I was just like, fuck this game. <laughs> I, was hmm. like, I was like, this game blows. Not Is that what you said when game. you put it on the, on the counter? Uh, yeah, I, 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 watched, I watched the game stop. I threw it like a frisbee at the guy's face. And I was like, fuck this game. And I ran. Wow. This, wait, here's your money. Wait. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Seems unnecessary. Yeah. And then I came back later and I said, hey, I returned a game earlier and nobody gave me money money. <laughs> and uh, they were like, you look familiar. And I was like, I don't know why. I've I've never been in this store before. I just, except for the refund except earlier. For, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The time. Yeah. Except for the time I did the refund. Yeah. Yeah, uneventful. He's got a black eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the same guy. <laughs> the guy's like, you're that dude. And I'm like, my vision's very blurry right now, but you look familiar. <laughs> no, yeah, no. I think your vision is malfunctioning, my friend. Malfunctioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And okay. I was doing that, and uh, I tried a couple of random chapters of Heavy Rain just to, you know, see what different outcomes would be, but haven't actually. Or did you beat stuff. it? Yeah, I beat, yeah, I thought we yeah. talked about that. Right? Oh, we did. Yeah, yeah, I talked about it with them. You had to. Yeah. We, oh, yeah, we did. We talked about our ending. Yeah. Did you feel like, because I don't know if you listened to the podcast last week, but I was talking about how I finished the story and I had all these intentions of going back and seeing all the different things, but I kind of I didn't want to. See, my thing is, I want to see the different outcomes. Like, because you got a I'd, crappy one. No, actually, I really loved my ending. Really? Like, after after everything, and it, like after thinking about it for a while, I was like, Horrible you know what? Person. In a way, I kind of got like the the most creative ending in a way like Jason got like the fucking Hollywood Care Bear ending like oh everyone lives happily ever after the killer dies and don't say what happens yeah guess. yeah but well, but that never thing, that never though. fucking yeah. happens in real life <laughs> anyway so you know I got well I probably shouldn't say anything with spoilers but I I got the like the independent film like the the edgy you know like sort of like you're if you're watching the movie you're like oh god why no and then everything's over and it's like you know the whole thing and you're just like oh my god conspiracy theories and then but then the whole alluding to a sequel that was like oh man (laughs) they're making another one maybe it depends on your ending if they're making another one (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah, depending on how many players yeah jason's done i I don't know it may take you two games to do what i did but i don't know (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I just might have twice as much fun as you. Ooh. No, but it was yeah. I really I really liked my ending. Uh I really did. Even though it was sort of the not as happy ending. Right. You know what I mean? I, I really did like what I got. Like it was yeah. it was like uh I finished and I was like, "Oh man, I was like excited for the next one or whatever, the next piece of story and stuff like that." By the way, Jason, did you or any of you if 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 you did play get the prologue like the previous no, uh, I did. Because yeah. it, I think it was out for people who got the reserve code, and then uh, if you got it, and then if not, it comes out on April 1st or 2nd, or the first week of April sometime. But um, I was talking to my friend at GameStop, one of, the, one of the dudes that works there, and he said he played through it like 12 times and still hasn't gotten all seven endings for that prologue. Jeez. Like because the, and the prologue is extremely dark and it leads into uh, like major like major storyline introductions to what happened and they said it he said it covers some of the plot holes that the the game had that the prologue sort of covers. Oh, well, that would be cool because there were some pretty big plot holes. Right. So so the prologue actually covers a lot of that. And the, I guess they wanted to release it with the game, but they didn't have enough time, so they just did it as a separate thing and or whatever. 
So anyway, yeah, it's uh, yada yada yada. All that stuff. <laughs> they do all, like all that, money. All that bullshit. Yeah. So, but that's it pretty much. Just Dawn of War two. I love watching fucking orcs and giblets fly all over the place, and a little bit every rain, a little bit Final Fantasy. That's it. Oh, and of course League of Legends. I still play that. That's it. You played something else. What did I play? Oh, Ruse. I played something last night. I played Ruse and Steve spanked me. <laughs> hot. Like, hot. Like yeah. a prostitute. Mm-hmm. In wow. Vegas. I'm lift up that skirt. Yeah. Like them fat asses. With a carrot. <laughs> what? So, dude, that's too oh. far, man. Come on. Yeah. Whoa. A little, a little bit of class. Yeah. Come Whoa. on. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. Hold it together here, pal. Yes. <laughs> this is Ooh. a family show. Oh, no, it's So what do you think of Ruse? <laughs> Um, and, and Steve and I were talking about this briefly before the podcast. Uh, it's sort of like it, – it's not like Risk in the sense of epic strategies and long-term stuff and, and things like that because the game that I had played, it's like a 25-minute timer thing uh, for the game to go. So it's like Risk. It's like the summarization of Risk. It's like uh, Speed Risk. Yeah, small scale. Small scale Speed Risk. It's like, okay, you're not taking over the world. You're taking over this – like – small territory and go you have 25 minutes to beat the other guy you're taking over florida yeah you're ta- not even it's like you're taking over south florida there you go you know what i mean it's it's like that but it's it's good it's like all the strategy and i it was my first game and it was steve's like fifth game so i was like figuring Lord. out whatever <laughs> like there was shit like that's like yeah, that's darked out yeah, there's shit like darked out, and I'm like, huh, I wonder why that's not available. Little did I know that you just have to click on it to research it. <laughs> You're like, this is just me, the beta. They don't want you doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, huh, why is that not available? Whatever. So I'm just like doing my shit. I'm like building buildings, and I'm like, I don't have any like good units available. And then all of a sudden, Steve has these units flying in my thing, and I'm like, how does he have that shit? <laughs> you know, it was like that. And then he was like doing decoys, and I'm like, I got a supply depot. <laughs> that's pretty cool isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it was uh i want to really see the the large scale stuff because the small scale like what we did was all about run out get as much of the supply depots as you could and build up uh as, as much as of as fast as you can and just start pushing it's like totally offense and i'm more of a person i like to turtle more i like to build up defenses and then build up my army behind them and then flood um but I, I really want to see a larger map. I, I like the game because it's very simple. I mean, it's all basically mouse controls. There's really no keyboard shortcuts that I could see. Um, but at at the same time, the whole thing was really built to use a touchscreen display. I mean, yeah, were, definitely. That, that was the big push with this game is they wanted this to be completely touch-driven. They even had like the video online of them at uh, E3 or wherever it was on like the 36 or 40 inch touchscreen display playing the game and it looked just freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, and that just like be... the multi-touch and the whole thing. Yeah. You can like zoom out with like multi-touch and stuff like that but that stuff looks really cool and I think if you could possibly do that if you had a touchscreen display and you could play it like that it would really send the game to another level and that's I mean I was even like online I was like okay how much are touchscreen displays because that would just be badass but I, I, I can't see spending that money just for one game. Um, and at, yeah. But as as a game without the touchscreen, it's still pretty good. And the graphics are good. It plays really easily. Um, but yeah, I, I'm more interested to see how the bigger maps are first before saying, yeah, that's a good purchase or not. Oh, that yeah, was another I, question. I, does, it doesn't seem like a $50 game. That, yeah, <laughs> at first, like yeah. uh, playing it right now, it's definitely not to me. It's not something I can see dropping 50 bucks. But I'm not as like huge of a strategy gamer as a lot of people are. So it may be, I mean, maybe it, f- it will fill that void. Um, but I, I like it uh, as more of a $30 game. Yeah, I think um, I I do love my strategy games. It was the first time I had ever played, so I really suck. Yeah. And, and I suck at strategy games as in any case, anyhow. But, but they're fun. But yeah, I f- yeah. freaking love yeah, them. And I, I think am. that yeah. a lot of people, as long as we can start getting a taste of some longer maps, like, because 25 minutes... If you ever play real-time strategy games online, 25 minutes is nothing. Right, that's a round. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's like, you know, the first round of, you know, okay, this is like we did one wave at each other, and then now we're going on to the next technology level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Ruse, 
I, at least in this in the case that we played, was very, very, very short. But yeah, in the same instance, though, that maybe that's what's good for me about it, because typically that's one, one of the things that holds me back from playing strategy games online, is that they almost always require a... Hours time, and hours. Yeah, yeah. A, a time investment that I don't have. And maybe as a 25-minute game, that is something that's promising about it. But I will say, the one thing that we forgot to, to say was how easy it was to get oh, into yeah. a multiplayer match. That was oh, the man. one thing about the game that I was, my jaw actually like dropped because it was just so cool. Did you see it was, medical attention? I did. I yeah. had it wired back up. Um, yeah. If you, it, like, it, was, it literally took like a second and a half for him to invite me. Yeah. And then I was in and we went and that was it. All it was, was, was like just, you go into the multiplayer, like the setup, the host menu basically, and start, you set up your map or set up however you want it. And then you can click a box that says invite friends. You click on that and it'll automatically bring up all your Steam friends. And Paz was on there, so I clicked on his icon, hit invite. He got the invite, hit OK, and he was automatically put into the lobby. And then we started playing. Hmm. Is it more than yeah. two players? I it believe can so. be, I'm sure. Yeah. But You should try that but, out before the beta is over. Because I, like, uh, I have it installed, and I haven't really gotten a chance to try it. It's cool. Yeah. Just so <laughs> you know, Jason, um, grayed out, uh, you know, like light blue grayed out things. Click on them to research it, and then yeah. build them. Okay. <laughs> just so you know, because I'm like running around with like just regular infantry, and he's coming out with me with artillery, and I'm like, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. And then I I got whooped like crazy, crazy. You didn't get him, did you? No, yeah. I, I I think I got like a supply depot of his, and then that's it. Ah, you didn't play anything else, Steve? Uh, what have I been playing other than that? A little bit of Lord of the Rings Online. Um, finally got installed last night, so while my boy was taking a nap today, I was home uh, with him being sick, so um, while he was napping, I played a little bit of It. I think I'm about 27, 28, but anyways, uh, playing that, and I know there was something else. What else was I playing? Oh, the Just Cause 2 demo. Oh, oh, that's, yeah, oh that I, did, I did try that. I forgot to say. Well, go ahead. Just Cause 2 is bonkers. It is Bana- bananas. <laughs> I gotta have that game. It's I'm bananas. So actually, buying that fucking game. That thing is just crazy. Woo. Uh, so you both, you both, you guys played it? Yeah. I, I didn't finish it or anything. I and I always, I, I, was, I, was, I was never was huge around. into uh, GTA. I was more into Saints Row. I don't know if you guys ever played Saints Row. Never played Saints Row, but, but I it, was, it was basically GTA, but just like crazy. Ridiculous, yeah. And that's what I liked, and this seems to even take that to the next level. Yeah. Just what you can do with the grappling hook and, oh, God, everything it, else. It was a time demo, and at the end of the time, like, as it was ticking down, I'm just like, no! Don't, <laughs> don't quit on me! I wanted to keep playing so bad, but what that's was bad... Good. What was don't cool, end yet. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was so mad. What was cool, like, one part, I actually completed a mission or whatever, so it extended my time, and I was just like, woo! But uh, no, it was just the amount of vehicles that you can drive around in. They they all even on the PC, which that was what surprised me about it was that I kind of figured like the shooting controls would be fine, but the driving around and shit, I was like, oh god, it's gonna be all janky, and you just you can feel that it's gonna be so much better on a console. But it's it felt really good. Yeah, that was one of the things I I noticed the most because I played the first one. I had rented it before. I didn't Mm -hmm. play it on the PC, but the driving kind of sucked. So no, did it. I'm glad they they fixed that. But no, it's uh, definitely a a must-buy for me, but just the crazy amount of shit that you can do in that game, just, it was basically, like I kind of said in the little article that I wrote, that it seems monotonous if you think about it, that you just basically, every mission is go into the spot, either kill this person or blow this thing up, and, but the amount of ways that you can go about doing that and like the stunts and shit that you can do, and with using the grappling hook arm thing, was just amazing. Uh, just being, just the amount of things you can do to t- to play around. It's just a big playground, and like they should just a, call it dicking around. The game. <laughs> they should dicking around too. Well, that's why they call it just cause, just cause I oh. fucking can. Oh, I didn't even get that. Ah. Yeah, ha. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're a funny ah. guy. You're a funny guy. But the the thing, like, right at the end that was cool was a little video that they showed, and I don't remember what they even said. It was like, you think that's all or whatever, and they showed you, like, the picture of the map where you were actually playing around in, and then they pan out to, like, how big 
the world is that you will actually get in the full game, and it was just like, oh my god. Yeah, I'm definitely getting that one. That's fun. Yeah. That's a cool game. Yeah. What about you, Shannon? What have you been playing? Uh, I have actually, oh, March no. is crazy. No, I haven't had time to play anything. Um, work's been nuts, and uh, March is like both of our families go crazy with birthdays. So it's it's this week, next week. I'm I'm busy, but uh, busy. uh, we were kind of talking today about you know, Jason's like, what happened to Olads? You were so into Olads, and it's like, well, for me, like I need um, I need like that organized contact. Like if it's not an organized type of if there's no structure mm. with the people I'm playing with if it's just oh come on log in whatever I'm not gonna do it like it's it's just like I, I need that I don't know responsibility or drive or commitment in order to get into it and like that's the hard I think that's the hard thing like with what we're hard. doing lately <laughs> it's just that I I crave the organization and the structure from a guild but I don't have time to do it anymore you know right yeah. And I want it, and I want us all to be there, but I can't do it. None of us can do it. So, like, we were talking about, like, in war, I want to find a guild that's already doing it and then, mm -hmm. you know, be a part of it. Um, and, and I think that's what we need to do as a group because we just can't do it. I don't know. What, do, right. you, do you think, like, you enjoy a game more with an organized, structured guild? It, like, it, even if they're non-demanding, but they have, like things going on yes and no i've been in a couple that i mean there's been some that have been small groups mm -hmm. that have been some of the best experience of my life in gaming that it's just, it was kind of a, just a known quantity that you go in there and those people are probably going to be on that night and if they weren't they probably had something else going on family wise so no big deal you find something else to do um but yeah i i do enjoy having some form of a structure and I, I kind of get what you, all odds is kind of not, I won't say failing me right now for that. It's not really for that reason. It's failing me for other reasons. And like I kind of said on the boards, it was just because I have all these other games that I've paid for that I'm playing that I want to play. And it's just kind of hard to, to push to do that. But that, I mean, that's something with that game going along with what you said, that that is something about that game that's weird is that, it's not made very structured anyways, so it's hard to kind of get that going. What do you think, Jay? I kind of feel the same way as you. I like, I really like the, I mean, that's how we've met most of, most everybody, is through mm -hmm. running a guild and a game, and you, I, and a group of other people have done it since 2003. And, uh, and I, I hate to not have that, and not to have that structure, and to meet people, and do all that, but I just, we can't do it especially with all these games that we're doing and MMOs as in general now are a lot of the same thing over and over and mm -hmm. your interest level in one is not going to last as long as it did five, six years ago. And until one comes along that I really know for sure that we're going to really solid base and we don't want to do it. And I hate to have say, Hey, we're going to run this guild. And that's what we avoided in all odds. Thank God. Um, we and you know start up a guild and get some sort of structure going and then some of us don't you know want to do other things and that's a big domino effect because we all like playing together yeah so, and that was that, the extra like the double edged sword with especially even i mean it came up with all odds but it's come up in other games too is that we all seem to like structure i mean it's, it's almost a given that we like structure and uh, but we have at least i have found that the structure that I came into with Circle of Trust when we were playing War was just perfect. It was great, awesome. Well, thank you. But <laughs> well, I'm just saying that 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 structure was great and everything was great. And then you move on to other games and you're pushing to make that again, and it's not working because the game's not working out for you or whatever. You just people aren't interested in it. Whatever. My, that, my when you when you have a smaller group and you have structure like that, it only lasts as long as. You know, as soon as a, a couple people who are, are really integral to that group decide to move on, it's really hard to keep going. Yeah, that's but it. The, the other edge of that sword, though, is then when you go into another guild, it's hard to accept their structure. Yeah. Because you already had this known quantity, and then you're going into this other one, and sometimes it works out good. You can be in a really good guild, but it's not the same. No, it's not. 
and and you start to think, well, you know, that's not how we ran it. We could run it differently, and then you fall right back into it. So yeah, I don't but know. We, there needs to be a major MMO evolution for anything like that for us to happen again, and it may never. But right. that's that's what really sucks. Even about if it, it did, do we really have time to run? That's what I'm saying too. Uh, like for me, it comes down to like that's what our problem was with war. It comes down to am I going to run the Warhammer Guild or am I going to do this podcast? Because mm -hmm. you, we record Friday nights, you know, Saturday, Sunday, we edit between doing family things. Well, when are you supposed to run a guild if you're not online in the game Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? And that was happening a lot towards the end of the war era. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's like it it's just not possible. Um, it's one or the other. And, and yeah, that's, that's the hard part is I, I think uh, we just, we really need to look more into finding the organization we crave rather than trying to create it and failing right. miserably the, every failing time. each other because you know fr quite frankly all of us deserve better so. <laughs> <laughs> well i think going Been back what to what we're jason out said, there. <laughs> going back to what jason said i mean there's so many mmos that are doing the, the same thing kind of and that's part that's part of the problem is that there's so many MMOs out there right now, and all of us are looking for a different thing out of it, and none of us are meeting in the middle as to what is up all of our alleys that we can say, yes, this is it. This right. is where we can make a home. That's the problem. It's like me right now, like all odds, going back to it. I'm not playing it because I still have my open sub for Lotro, and it's like... Technically, I think Lotro is a, a better game all around. It, I don't know about All Odds Endgame, but for me, if I'm already paying for this game, why would I be playing this free-to-play game? And then, like, you guys are starting to play War again because there's things that have changed in it, and then it, it's fun PvP. So that's and, what's working for see, you. But see, even there, Jason's playing one side and I'm playing another. Yeah. Exactly, but st yeah. But you, and you said it, it's fun PvP. I have, I have no desire to play PvE in this game, so it's exactly. not going to be something that I am ever going to say, hey, I'm going to be here a long time, and what, I'm, we should get a guild going. It's not going to happen. And, no. to me, and to me, fun PvP is right now is global agenda, because I can jump on, do it, the same way that you're jumping on and doing scenarios. So. And that's, that's where we become like really divided yeah. in terms of attention. And when you're in a, especially if you're running or part of being an officer part of running a guild um, in an MMO, you, you can't play once a week, really. You have to be available. No, and... you can't go check out all these other new releases like we no, are. No, yeah. It's, it's, I don't think it fits our group anymore, really, to run no, a guild. No, that's a big part. Of, I mean, that's, that's why we made the change to multi-playing, you know, a year yeah. whenever we did it, because that was the big thing. We, there's too much shit going on, and we like to play, and now now technology and, and communication over... The PC has come to a point where it's, it, you know, you're not logging in, looking at your friends list in an MMO. You're just turning on your computer and looking at Skype, looking at other things, Steam, Steam. looking at what people are playing. And like, hey, I want to play that. Where before, all the people that I played online games with were in MMOs. And the only time I, talk, I communicated with them, with them at all was on the message board or in-game. And it's way different now. Yeah. yeah. Way more accessible to find everyone. They yeah, talk I'm gonna to log on and see John or Steve playing. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna play Warhammer right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into Ruse and, and check that out. It's just that's that's pretty much how uh, Steve and I ended up playing together. Was I launched Steam and I was just chilling. I was I hadn't decided when I to play it, and I saw Steve launch Ruse, and I was like, oh shit, I'll play Ruse with him. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's I think exactly. That's, awesome. I, I'm, that's exactly I'm really, how it happened. And that's one reason that I've really gone from being, I mean, before I played, I didn't play a lot of PC games except for MMOs, and I played all my other games on the console. Mm -hmm. And now the fact that I can turn on Steam and see that, I, I want to play most everything on the PC now. And, I'll, you know, I've got a better computer as well. But it's come to that point where I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to say I don't miss that, but I, I, I love kind of what PC gaming has become with that, with those type of communication tools and mm -hmm. You know, it, it it definitely changes things. And on another level, too, it almost, you know, makes you want to buy more stuff through Steam or run yeah, it through Steam exactly. or things like that. You know, yep. like, for example, I, I still get some games at GameStop, and I'm starting to think, you know, even now, like, well, there's almost nothing that Steam doesn't have. There's very, very, very few games now that Steam gets uh, or doesn't get. Yeah, I'm running Warhammer online right now, you know, with, through a shortcut through Steam. I didn't buy it on Steam, but yeah, same thing. Right, yeah, right. I, even if you're not buying it through there, I still shortcut all my stuff through there so people know what I'm playing. 
Yeah, exactly. So and if you you know you can still there you go. People know where you're at. There you go. Steam's ruined MMOs. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's just ruined uh, our ability to um, run a well. Actually, no, podcasting uh, what, <laughs> ruined our ability to run a guild in an MMO. So no, oh. well, Harley Mythic did that too. They've done studies, you know. Sixty percent of the time, it works. Every time. That doesn't make sense. Okay, well, we don't have... Let's see. I don't think we have any feedback. Um, and no reviews to read or thank for. But, you know, thank, thank you, you for... Community. Thank you, community, for listening. You know, Thank you for so. your general apathy towards us. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I would rather them be apathetic than to hear about how much we suck. Uh, it's true. Yeah, so I'm glad that the people who make comments are happy... And the rest are like, nah, it's not worth it. <laughs> Which we not. enjoy. Yeah, I can respect all of that and be happy with it. I'm content. So I think that's about it. Everyone have a good week. Um, see ya, right? Call, call your mom. She hasn't heard from you in forever. What are you talking about? I don't know. Well, gentlemen, no point in hanging around this dump any longer. Wait, where are you going? I was going to make a spread to Show's over, folks. You can't go. All the players are going to die. Take off, eh? Thanks for listening to Multiplying, the companion podcast at Multiplying.net. Questions, comments, feedback, errors, etc. can be sent to Multiplying at gmail.com. We invite you to write a review on iTunes and visit our website at www.multiplying.net. We've made a lot of friends, shared a lot of laughs. Often at the expense of others. I think some people are going to be upset. Let me just close this conversation by saying you are one unique individual. Thank you and good night. Somebody told me that you were so stupid, but I didn't believe them. <laughs> but now I believe them. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> There's our outro, ladies and gentlemen. I do not know this game. It is an absolute mystery to me. <laughs> Dead Workers Party Network, traveling at 88 miles per hour.